When you were at the farm last week, uh, we talked a little bit about turnips, uh, and here are some little baby uh, turnips, and we'll do a quick saute in a little bit uh, with the turnips and, uh, and with the turnip greens as well. Uh, additionally, we talked about uh, the peas that we're growing out at the farm, and so I have uh, some pea flowers and pea vines, and the first pea of the year, uh, they're about that big now. Uh, and so we'll do a dish of uh, sautéed lamb uh, with mustard and then uh, pea flowers. Uh, the lamb takes a, a bit to cook. Um, uh, and the pea leaves take just seconds. So right at the last couple of seconds of uh, cooking, I'll remove the lamb and let it rest. Mm -hmm. And then throw the pea leaves in with a little bit of lemon zest, which I have zested here. And zest is the, the outer yellow part of a lemon or a grapefruit or an orange. Uh, additionally, I'll saute in a little bit of potato with garlic. Um, and kind of that'll all mix together. And then I have a sauce made from the bones from the lamb, reduced down as a stock, uh, where I finished it with a little bit of mustard, and that's delicious. So, uh, we call this uh, roasted leg of lamb with uh, English peas and, uh, and lemon. It's very, very simple. There's a lot of thinking that goes on behind the scenes, and there's a lot of work that goes into making a simple sounding dish, um, uh, but it's really quite nice. Uh, for leg of lamb, uh, the best flavor and texture come from uh, using a combination of high heat, quick cooking, as well as slow roasting. So I have my oven set on uh, medium to low heat. Uh, I'll do a quick saute uh, on top of the stove that you'll see, and then I'll put the, the whole uh, piece of lamb into the oven and then let it slow cook for a while. Uh, and then when it's, when it's done and rosy on the inside, uh, then I'll pull it out and, and finish the rest of the dish, slice it up. So I've thrown a little uh, oil, uh, we use grapeseed oil in the restaurant, I've thrown a little oil into the pan and I'll brown the lamb pieces. That's exactly it. It has two qualities which we like a lot uh, for general cooking. The first is that it has no flavor whatsoever. Uh, so the flavor of the lamb or the flavor of the peas comes through um, is number one. The second reason is it has a very high cooking temperature. So we can very, very quickly and very aggressively brown whether it's a piece of fish or a piece of lamb. I have a little bit of uh, boiled potato here uh, that I've diced up. After the lamb is finished cooking, I'll add that in. Um, and that'll be the, uh, uh, the starch of the dish. Uh, I've separated the peas out into two groups. Uh, peas with larger stems over here, or I should say pea vine with larger stems over here. These are the ones that I'll saute. And then I've taken the most tender tips and flowers off and separated those out. And I'll we'll sprinkle those on at the very end of the dish. Uh, additionally, we'll flavor the peas in their saute with a little bit of lemon zest and a little squirt of lemon, um, as well as we'll, we'll have a little bit of garlic in for background flavor. Uh, these are fresh uh, turnips that I harvested about a half an hour ago um, uh, from, the, from the field. And uh, we, we love these. The variety name is Gold Ball, and they uh, perform wonderfully. Um, they cook up deliciously, and they're not too spicy. They're very sweet turnips, uh, and they grow very quickly. Uh, and we, we serve turnips pretty much year-round now. These are the first, the very first of the spring turnips, and, um, uh, and they'll be followed by larger versions as the summer progresses. Uh, and then the very largest, uh, prettiest turnips will store for the winter. So now I've browned the lamb, and I'll uh, put this into our low oven um, and let it cook through until it's rosy on, on the inside. So I noticed you brand it just on one side. 
Mm -hmm. That's right. The, uh, the pan itself is very hot. Uh, so as I've turned them over, they'll continue cooking. Uh, the pan, as it goes into the oven, will begin to cool down to the oven's temperature, uh, and it'll brown the bottom, uh, the second side, uh, and then and continue to cook through. Eric, um, this is a farm-to-table bistro, so presumably whatever you're growing dictates your menu. Um, does your menu change often? Well, it changes every day, and the uh, beginning of the menu uh, happens at around 10 in the morning uh, when I've uh, had a chance to, to walk through all the fields uh, and taste the little bits from different, uh, from different beds and check on the pro progress of everything that's growing. Um, I'll plan out what the harvest is for the day, uh, and then myself and uh, the, the rest of the farm crew will uh, go through and harvest what the restaurant needs in the afternoon. Uh, later in the afternoon, then I bring the, the, uh, all the ingredients in for the night service. Um, and we, we have big bins and baskets that, that come in and uh, very quickly the, the kitchen staff uh, springs to life and every, uh, everyone starts cooking everything very quickly. So now I'm pulling the lamb out to rest for a few minutes and in, the, uh, in this same pan I'll saute the potatoes and when they're finished I'll continue on with the rest of the with the rest of the ingredients because we cook things at high heat um, it tends to make the very outer edge of the lamb a little dry uh, if we let the lamb rest for a few minutes it, it allows the juices to kind of flow back out towards the edges so that uniformly it's tender and juicy uh, instead of just having the center part juicy that way so over here I'll begin to saute the turnips So here the, uh, here the potatoes are browning fairly well, and I'll throw in a little bit of garlic now. Now we'll let that rest for a moment, and we'll let that rest for a moment and slice the lamb. The the texture of the lamb is much, much better, much more tender when it's sliced thinly um, versus in, in thick slices. So I have a few more garnishes. This is um, the gio I had mentioned before. Um, it's very simply stock with mustard uh, reduced down. What kind of mustard? Um, uh, Pomery mustard. A little bit more lemon, tiny bit of lemon juice, and we'll garnish with a few pea flowers and the tender tips of the peas as well. And there you are.